during the Hundred Year War between the French and the Brits, mythical creatures fought in their midst. Great armies marched to seize the throne, to claim the title and rule alone. Time of Legends, Joan of Arc. In a game of angels, werewolves, demons and more, knights and archers versus the beasts roar. Command your armies, you must not fail, it's good versus evil on a miniature scale. Time of Legends, Joan of Arc, Models, not all set. Hi everybody, my name is Antoinette and welcome to Board Game Inquisition, where we're here to give you insights and indeed information about the board games you might just want to have in your own collection. So are you ready for something really, really big, something very, very fun, and something that's definitely full of a lot, a lot of miniatures? Well, if so, then here's five things I think you need to know about Time of Legends, Joan of Arc. Ooh, da 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 da! Thing one, what's this game all about? Well, Time of Legends Joan of Arc, hereafter referred to as Joan of Arc, is a game that's set during the Hundred Years War between Britain and France. And this is a period in history where a lot of knights and a lot of princes were very much trying to take over the throne of France. Um, now, is this a setting? Is it a theme? I guess it's up to you to decide, but in my mind this is simply a jumping off point. Because on the one hand you can play as both the British and the French armies, and you may recognise certain heroes from, you know, lore and history in there. Um, but then the game decides to bleed fantasy into reality, as suddenly you have things like angels and demons and werewolves all become part of the story and be as actual as those initial armies you played with. Um, there's something uncomfortable about this meshing of these themes where you're going from real historical battles to suddenly, you know, hunting down werewolves. Um, but you know what? It's actually a whole bunch of fun. Um, and to be fair, actually, I feel like the game taught me a little bit of history. I, um, I feel like I learned something here um, in a kind of a fun and engaging way. Um, and I think that's one of the game's, you know, better aspects where it combines fantasy and history in some sort of messed up triumph. Thing to mechanics. So Joan of Arc is a war game, meaning you'll have a bunch of miniatures and you're going to move them around the terrain pieces and that on the board and have battles. But in this case, there are scenarios which you are trying to complete the objectives for to become victorious. So it's not all just straight up fighting, although you can do that too. Um, I like the fact that the, there's a good variety in these scenarios and not all of them are just I charge into you and I try and kill as many of your men as possible. Oftentimes they will um, ask you to employ kind of tactics and strategy um, and I like that. I found that kind of interesting. Now, how you activate your units um, is super, super smart. Um, so you have action cubes, which you can dole out to your units during the turn. Um, and you place one of these cubes out and everything in that, you, in that unit or that area will activate, um, making it really handy to move multiple units together at once. And of course they do basic things, you know, they'll move, they'll shoot their bow, they can attack, um, you know, those kinds of things. And every unit has their own special abilities or um, their own way, I suppose, of engaging with the game. They have cards for you to keep track of all of this information. And what I really appreciate it is that most units, if not all, do something special, right? But not so many special things you couldn't keep track of them, um, as has been known to happen in other war games. Um, and I like that a lot. And sometimes they feel very thematic as well, and they fit very well with the scenario you're playing with. So I thought that was pretty darn cool. Now, we have to talk about combat, right? Because this is a war game after all, and Joan of Arc uses special dice um, for rolling to see who gets damaged and if you get to block damage or not. Um, and normally I don't like the special dice thing, but it actually works really well here. I love some of the options actually you get when you're attacking, or more importantly, when you fail to attack somebody. There are, there are, there are extra things going on here. So for instance, you may try and hit somebody, but instead you might knock them back a space instead. And that sometimes can be just as good as if they were dead. And speaking of dead, this is another favourite feature I have of the game, is the fact that you're, not all of your units necessarily die. Um, they can be injured and go to the infirmary instead 
instead. And there is a chance that at the start of the next round, you and you roll the dice that they might come back and fight for you again. Um, and I love that. I love that. It just took some of the edge out of, you know, when you, when you play a game and you've lost your pieces and then it's even harder to come back because you don't have your pieces. Um, so this kind of, um, I just love how it kind of gets rid of that uh, kind of aggression feeling. It makes the game feel very, very friendly. Um, so overall, like Joan of Arc has a, a lot of mechanics going on in it for sure, right? War games have a tendency to, there's a rule for everything. However, I think they fit together really, really well and they make a lot of sense to me. Um, and not only that, I think they're a lot of fun. This, this is a complete game right out of the box. None of it feels like it doesn't hang together. And of course, I forgot to mention that you can build your own army list too, mostly because I don't like building army lists. I'm not good at putting stuff together. And that means that if you get fed up with playing the scenarios of, or if there's a particular set of characters you just want to play with together, you can do that and play against your friends and beat the crap out of each other. Um, and I love that you have that option, even if it's something I probably wouldn't have chosen myself. Thing three on the table. Well, games with miniatures tend to have a table presence and Joan of Arc is no exception. It's got some beautiful models, some gorgeous terrain. On a whole, this game is stunning when it's set up on the table. Now, how long it takes to set up is a different issue entirely. How long is a piece of string? Um, setting up here is intensive. And not only that, but you have to find each of the models um, out of all of the boxes. So for instance, if you're setting this up for the first time, none of the miniatures are marked. So you don't know which is which and you have to guess and compare them to the little pictures. Um, yeah, it's a bit of an ordeal. And if you plan on owning this and keeping this for a while, you're going to want to invest in some sort of system of organization here. Um, yeah, it's just, it's tedious without a doubt. Um, now the rule book is one that I've heard people complain about but you know what actually we didn't find it all that bad and I think that's because um, we've played a lot of war games before in my house so a lot of the terminology and how everything works feels very very similar. If you're a board gamer going into this for the first time I can totally see why this would be overwhelming. There is a lot of information to take in and a lot of detail. However Gameplay itself is rather intuitive once you get going, but there's a lot of stuff to wade through to get there. Um, so how long does it take to play Joan of Arc? Yet again, how long is a piece of string? It depends on your scenario, it depends on your players. We've had some scenarios end very, very quickly. Um, turned out there was kind of a knack to that that we figured out afterwards. We've had some last much longer than that as I clung on and refused to die. Um, but overall, this is a game that because it takes so long to set up, it's well worth leaving it set up or playing multiple games of it at once. Um, yeah, that seems to be the way to go. Now, replayability, well, there, there's tons of it here. So there's just so much content and so many different ways to use it. Um, and you can also, you know, build your own army lists as well if you've, you know, gone, somehow got through all of the scenarios and played those. Um, so you can create your own armies and fight them against your friends. But of course, the real, I guess, variability here is from you, the players, because it's a war game. So every time you play, maybe you'll have a different strategy. Maybe you'll do something slightly different or you'll use a unit in a different way. Um, this is a game that screams replayability all over it. Thing four, how does this game look and feel? Well, in my mind, Joan of Arc is everything a good miniatures game should be. It's got some really interesting and appealing art, a really weird and unusual backstory and setting for you to play in. And then of course there are these stunningly created miniatures. Um, this is the kind of game when I look at the box, I just, I wish I could have it on the table. Now, of course, we do have to talk about these miniatures. They do make up the majority of the game. Um, and there are an awful lot of them. And not only that, they're super, super teeny. So I don't know how you guys feel about that, but I like the fact they were small enough to be able to create units so they could ride around together so we didn't have to do kind of skirmish battles. Really, really like that. Um, there's great variety in the miniatures too. It isn't just bags of the same guys. There's tons and tons of unique ones. And of course, if you're a painter, there's a whole ton of value here I, I won't even attempt to approach um, when it comes to like fun levels. Now, there is more to this game than the miniatures. Um, and all of the other components are also beautifully made. So like those specialized dice, all of the cardboard pieces, everything in here feels kind of, you know, it feels solid um, and it feels well made. Um, overall, this game really is kind of an aesthetic delight and it's one I wish I could play more of. Thing five, is this game actually any good? Um, for me, I think 
a lot of the issues you might have with Joan of Arc come from the fact that it is a war game and not necessarily from the game itself, you know, just rather the type of thing it is. Um, so when it comes to war games and indeed Joan of Arc, you'll get issues like, you know, the rules are hard to learn. Well, because they're encompassing an entire system you're learning as opposed to, you know, a set of particular rules. Um, then, of course, there's always arguing about the rules themselves, about who's right, who's got the right interpretation of it. Is this the spirit of the rule? You know, am I standing in the right place? Can you see me? Are you allowed to roll that many dice? Um, you get a lot of that stuff in war games and Joan of Arc, yet again, is no exception. Um, it's going to take a lot of time to set it up um, and to put it away and also a lot of space to store it in because you just have so many models. This is definitely a time sink. This is not a game you're going to be setting up for fun of an evening maybe. Um, this is like a, you know, a couple of hours or perhaps even a day um, of playing Joan of Arc. Um, and finally, the, the, probably most dangerously, is the fact that if you like this, like most war games, you're probably going to want to buy more of it. Um, and that brings me to the point of the price. This is a very expensive game um, and also one that currently is difficult to get a hold of because it's a Kickstarter game, right? Um, and the problem, I suppose, with that is that it involves a lot of investment on your part um, to know that this is the game you want to play and this is one you want to spend your time on and your money on. However, I do think this game is great value for money. I, I'm still shocked at the amount of miniatures and content and things like that that I, I keep finding in the box. Um, because every time we play a new scenario, we pull out new people and there's just more things. Um, I'm yeah, it's I think it's great value for money. Um, a little bit like Gloomhaven, you're absolutely getting your value here. Um, and the most important part of all of this is that this is really, really, really fun. Um, I've played war games a lot um, and I, I quit them all. I was sick of putting loads of money into them and I decided, you know, the war game itch comes back and I really wanted to find a war game that was all in one box that I wouldn't have to buy any more pieces for, right? Um, and that would just be there ready to set up whenever we felt like we wanted to play. Um, and Joan of Arc was on my radar and I watched it for some time, but it's just so expensive. It's very hard to make that leap, right? Um, but it's completely outdone itself in my anticipation. Um, I love that this is a, a game that you play with units. Um, I really enjoyed the campaigns. I really like the different characters you can play with. That's, you know, some of them are actual historical figures is actually kind of cool. And then of course, there's the whole, you know, mystical part of this as well, um, where there are demons and angels and all sorts of cool stuff. Um, like, this game is fantastic. Um, and war games, I think though, are, are a particular type of fun. You know, where you're trying to figure out which is the best unit to fight against my opponent's unit. What's the best terrain thing I should do? How do I make my opponent do something bad that's good for me? It's a very specific type of, you know, board game puzzle. Um, and I think that's, well, part of why it makes it so fun, but I think the setting and everything else really, really helps this along. This game feels luxe, it feels fun, it feels entertaining, and dare I say light? No, probably not light, because there's nothing light about war games, but it's just got an air about it that doesn't make it feel heavy or depressing. So, Joan of Arc is both lovely and smart and demands your commitment. So, do I think you should have Joan of Arc in your collection? Well, if you're not afraid of commitment, you like a bit of history, a bit of fantasy, a game with solid gameplay that also looks really great, then this is a game you probably should be looking into. You've been watching Board Game Inquisition. Why not like or subscribe to the channel so you can get updates about my future videos? Or if you've got any comments or queries you'd like to make about Time of Legends, Joan of Arc, why not ask them in the comment box below? I might even answer you. And until next time, stay tuned for more short and informative board game reviews.